So, you want to set up a save and load system for your game in Godot 4. Well, I'll show you the main steps in setting up this system. Also, this will be for saving with the Godot resources themselves. Uh, what you'll need before we get into the saves is you'll need your main script. You'll also need a globals file, uh, also known as an autoload file. Just any globals file will do. And you'll also need some way to interact with the save and load functions. I have these buttons here, but basically whatever way you want the player to actually save in the game, just buttons will do. There's three main steps into setting up the save and load system. One, create a save game resource script. Two, in your main, create the save and load game functions. And three, connect them to signals so that people can actually use them. And I'll be running through these steps in more detail now. All of the code is in the GitHub link in the description, and it's just organized into the chapters of this video. So, First, we need to create the save game resource itself. What you need to do is just right click wherever you want to make it, do new and make a new script. Don't make a new resource, make a new script, make a script and call it something such as save game and we'll open the script up. Uh, and first thing you want to do in the script is change extends node to extends resource and underneath we just put class underscore name uh, save game or whatever you want to call it. This is just so we can reference it in main later. Uh, now we have an empty resource script. You will store whatever you want to store in this script. I'm going to fill it up with a basic template I made before. I'll link this below, but I'll also explain what it is now. So first we got a constant save game path and this is just where we're going to save it. This isn't the full path itself, you need to actually end it with .tres, this is just a setup because later on I'll be adding an ID to where it's saved. Uh, and we can open up the actual files itself and you can see these are the actual saves, save underscore 2.tres where 2 is the ID. And then underneath we just have whatever we want to save. These are just variables, but whenever you're saving in a resource, you need to put at export in front of whatever you're saving. So you need to make them all exports. In this example, I'm just going to show you how to save the player position, which in my case is a vector free uh, because it's a 3D game. But if you're making a 2D game, this will be a vector two. Uh, but so vector free, and I'm also going to save uh, a save date, which is the exact time that this save file was created. And then finally, we have the functions to actually write to and load from the files. Uh, so the first one just writes and saves. The second one checks if a save exists in the file system. And the third one loads the save from the file system. These all take in an ID as a string that I'll get to later, but they create the save path with just a string save game path as we had before, plus the ID plus tres. And then they use the resource saver object to either save, check if it exists, or load the save itself. And this will just save to the file, check if the file exists, and then load the save game from this file. So now that the resource script has been made, we need to make the functions in main now. So open your main file up. Wherever your main file is, just open it up. And the first thing we need to do is reference the save resource. And we just do this by doing var save colon save game. And this save resource in the main will be our main save game, the current save game as you may call it. And now we can make this two main functions, which are save game main and load game main. And again, these both take in an ID string, which is just the save ID. If you're only doing a single save system, you don't need this ID as for multi saves, which I'm just going to show you how to do a multi save. And these save game mains and the load game mains just do what they say they do. So save will first create a new save game resource using save game .new, And then we store whatever we need to store in the save. So we store the player position in the save by doing save dot player position equals player dot global position. And I also store the current save date using time dot get date time string from system. This just gets the current time in a string and stores it in the save. And then we use the write save game function we made in step one to actually write it to the disk using the ID. And what this will do is just write it to the disk as we saw before with that ID. So it will save save underscore two dot tres using this write save game function. And in that tres will just be the player position and the saved date and whatever we have set up in there. 
and you can see play position and save date. So it writes it to the file in the save. What about the load game main? Well, that just loads. So first we need to check if the save actually exists. I check if the save doesn't exist. So if save game doesn't exist, it equals false, it will return because we don't want to run it if there's no save in that ID. Uh, and then we just load it using the load save game function we made in step one with the ID into the save. So it loads the save game into the save and then we actually need to load whatever is stored in the save to the game itself. So for position, we need to make the player's global position equals the save's player position. And afterwards, I just update the game using mainly just a global emit signal called updated save, which I'll get into later. And this just updates whatever I've set up. But the main thing is, is this player.globalPosition equals save.playerPosition. You put whatever things you want to save and load in these two main functions. Also remember that the player in this case is a reference to my player. You need to change it to whatever your player is. But these two main functions will be where all the syncing's done. So when you save, you get the player position and put it into the save player position. And then when you load, you get the save player position and put it onto the player's global position. While this create or load save function up here is what I have for loading or creating the auto saves. I run this at I run this at ready for the initial loading in. So just remember you need a some you needed some way to create an initial save. And that's what I do. I just have this create or load save function. So right now this will just save and load the player's current position in the game. And to show off what this code does, I'll show it off in my current game I'm working on, 90s Video Rental Store Simulator. Devlog coming soon for this game, so subscribe for the devlog coming soon. So, if I move around and just make a couple saves in different positions, all it will do when I click load is it will just take the player back to the position that they saved in. And that's the only thing it saves, remember? So I have a day-night cycle. It won't save the day-night cycle because the only thing that's set up right now is the player's position. You can't do this right now because we haven't done the third step yet. The third step is to actually make a system to call the main functions that we made in step two. This is when I said you needed some buttons at the start. You can see I have a list of five buttons here and these buttons just call the main save and load functions with their respective save IDs. So you're gonna need some buttons for however many save slots you want in the game. All the buttons do the same thing, so step 3. Add the press button signal to all your buttons. If you don't know how to add signals to your buttons, just in the editor, on the left, click on the buttons themselves, and then in the top right you'll see the tabs Inspector and Node. Click on the Node tab, and then pressed, double click on pressed and connect it to wherever you want to connect it. That'll add the functions on save button pressed, and in this function, we simply emit a global signal to save or to load, whatever you want to do. I use the same buttons for saving and loading, but the main thing is, is that they need to emit the signal, save game main or load game main, based on what they're going to do with their respective ID. So an ID of auto save or an ID of zero or one, depending on what button they press, they need to have a different ID. So these all emit a global signal, which in my case, my globals file is called globs, but whatever your globals file is, you're going to have to open up your globals file and add these three signals to it. Signal, load game main, signal, save game main, and signal, updated save. You have to add that to your globals file, whatever globals file you have, to auto load at the start of the game. You'll need to add these signals. So now, whenever the button is pressed, it will emit a global signal, save game main, with the ID, say, of auto, if you click the auto save button, and that will go to the main function to the save game main with the ID of auto. But in the main file, you're going to have to connect these two functions to the global signal. If you don't know how to do that, just in your ready function, just do globals.savegamemain.connect save game main. I use the same name for the signals and the functions to make it easier, and you got to do that for the load game main also. So globals.loadgamemain.connect loadgamemain. 
and that just connects the global signal to these functions. So whenever the global signal is admitted, it will run these functions, whether you want to save or to load. So again, whenever you press the save game button in the menu, it will emit a global signal save game main with the ID of say auto, if you click the auto menu, and then the main will catch the save game signal, which will then create a new resource, save the stuff to the new resource, and then write to the save game using the ID. And this is just this function that we made in step one, which saves it to the pass. And then this would just make these saves here. If you want to view the save files, by the way, you can click project up the top left and then open user data folder. This will just open the folder to wherever the saves will be saved on disk. You will also want to update things after the save has been loaded or whatnot. And that's why I had this global signal updated save emitted after loading, uh, which just updates everything. You will need to connect this to whatever you want to be updated in the game, such as your map or whatnot. But you may have also noticed this global update save dates function in the main functions just above the updated save. And I'll show you what it does. This is in the globals file. And basically what it does is it goes through each of the saves, checking if they exist and then loading them in just so it can get all of the save dates into the current save. And this was why in my example, if I click on the button to save, it actually changes the button's text to be the date of that save. It just uses the save dates dictionary. I don't know if there's a better way to get all the save dates, but this is how I did it. That's pretty much it for this save system. I've put all the code I've shown on my GitHub link in the description. The code, however, won't work out of the box. It is though organized into the chapters from this video. I've been experimenting with trying to save pack scenes as well, but haven't really had much luck without it breaking something else in my game. So this was just saving variables and data. Uh, if I do figure out a good way to save and load pack scenes, I'll make a follow up. Uh, so like the video if I helped you out. Have fun everyone, subscribe for more devlogs or whatnot. Bye bye.